How do you do? It would be a little unkind to present this picture without just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to... Uh, well, we've warned you. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Wyatt's Metal Podcast of Wyatt Wednesdays, of whatever you want to call it, day, uh, whatever shoe fits, I guess. Welcome! Uh, that was the finished, final version of our first song called Fractured Perception. It is now available on all streaming platforms, it is available on Bandcamp. It's available on uh, YouTube Music, as someone just pointed out, which I haven't even checked out yet. <laughs> uh, go check it out. Let us know what you think. So far, we've gotten pretty good feedback, and I'm really happy with it. Um, and it's cool, because that song that you just heard is the very first song that I ever like helped write from the very beginning and saw it craft and become an actual full song now out on Spotify. It's like, I remember just being a little baby, and then it grew up so quickly into this 
death metal juggernaut. <laughs> if I'm tuning my own horn, I guess. But yeah, so um, the first two songs of our upcoming EP have been released, Fractured Perception and The Order. Uh, we have two more songs coming out real soon. We're pretty much just waiting on the artwork to be done. And then um, we'll be able to release those two. So it'll be like, ah, oh, it's an actual EP now. But we've got two more songs that I think are even heavier bangers coming up. And then we've got more stuff if you want to come see us live sometime, like at Tolminator. But um, yeah, so that's the very first exciting piece of announcements I have for everybody. The Sorry. The Dark Insanity music is live out there. Please go comment and tell us how much you think it sucks and how we only know how to play uh, three notes. And that's it. <laughs> Um, the bassist comments saying your new songs are really good. Thank you. I appreciate that. I hope that it, they bring much headbanging and rowdiness to the people out there. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> Slayer always. <laughs> um, sanity is a virtue says good afternoon. Savior of metal. Your new songs are bangers. Thank you. Uh, first comment from Tao singing, what's up? Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I didn't have too many ideas on hand of what to talk about, but I do have some things. Um, namely, more announcements that I have first. If you saw in my intro during the song right there, um, I now have merch available, which is crazy. Never thought I would say that. We have Wyatt's Metal merch. We have Dark Insanity merch. We have uh savior of metal merch sorry i was blanking for a moment let me pull it up and share with all of you fine people that's right we are now everywhere you can type in dark and sandy in google and things will actually come up i guess but let me just show it really quick and just so everybody knows i did order a bunch of this stuff myself so <laughs> uh Probably the next podcast or something, I'm going to be wearing all my own merch. It's going to be really lame. Everyone's going to be think it's so cringe and not watch anymore. <laughs> oh, I typed in the wrong thing. I'm stupid. Uh, fun fact. If you type in the wrong thing, you won't find the shop, as I just learned. Learn something new every day. This is taking too long. Why is it not just pulling up? Okay, I put the link in the better spot. Do, do, do. Pause for a dramatic effect, everybody. How has everyone been in the last week? Um, what metal news has uh, spiked your interest that you want me to talk about? It could go over a whole bunch of different things today. Um, I did just watch Tank the Tech's new video that he released a little bit before jumping on here. And I did want to comment on that briefly. All right, here it is. I have so many goddamn tabs pulled up right now. Welcome to Why It's Metal at Spread Shop. You can get Save Your Metal shirts. Uh... All of this cool stuff. Look at this nice ass jacket. <laughs> uh, all types of different designs you can get on everything. There's uh, stickers. We don't have patches yet, but that is the plan for sure. Dark and sandy ones. I think the dark logo actually looks pretty cool. For anyone new who's just tuning in, this is not a thing I would normally do where I'm just going to like talk about my own shit that I'm selling for a while. This is the first time I've had my own promo shit to sell. So please allow me the moment to just glow and celebrate for a moment to promote. And then I'm probably not going to do that shit again. But I'm proud of myself, right? Give me a moment, please. I managed to type up a spread shop. Come on, it says a lot. That hat looks pretty cool, I got to say. <laughs> Uh, pens, stickers, dogs, bags, pillows, dark and sleepities. <laughs> uh, yeah, the sticker. Uh, hemp bags. We have dark and sandy and white metal hemp bags. 
So now you can hide your weed in a bag that has my name on it. And that is really funny to me. If anyone does that, please send me a picture. <laughs> um, Levitating Slipknot says, can you blah? A bit, yeah, if I warm up my voice more. Um, yeah, there's the blah, and there's the Ugh, and all those classic moves. You got to be skilled in all of them. Um, what was other stuff I wanted to talk about really quick? More, oh, pull up another page. I don't remember if I said on here or uh, maybe another stream I was on or something, but I did recently listen to the new Judas Priest album, Invincible Shield, and I did also listen to the new uh, Bruce Dickinson album, The Mandrake Project. And personally, I liked the Bruce Dickinson album a lot more. I thought it was more interesting. It grabbed me a little bit more. Honestly, when it comes to music, I tend to not really question like why I got why it grabs me or not. Like I listen to it and it either grabs my attention or it doesn't. And I tend to not really like sit and kind of dwell on it. And that goes to like it could be a super complicated song or super simple song. Um, sometimes I either just feel it or don't, but, uh, not to say that I didn't enjoy the Judas Priest album. I thought it was good. It wasn't bad, but it also, it just didn't excite me really at any point. Like I didn't, um, I didn't dislike listening to it, but I also didn't really have any moments where I was like, oh fuck, this is awesome. Um, but that's just me. I still love the shit out of Jesus Priest, of course. But the Bruce Dickinson al album, I thought was really cool. Uh, I thought it had this nice heaviness to it with his vocals, and you got to experiment with a bunch of different sounds. I would recommend that one. Another thing I have to shamelessly promote really quick. We in Dark Insanity have started a GoFundMe to try to help us afford getting the Tominator, because as you guys know... Everything is really fucking expensive. Um, and I don't, I believe me, I am not Winter Sun. I have no thought of this is one of the most important things in there out in the world right now. So please sell your car and your children and donate to our GoFundMe. I am not saying that. I'm also not, not saying that. But <laughs> we just thought that see if anyone has a couple of dimes laying around to help out to try to help us get over there flights are expensive um existing is expensive wrote this whole little bio here thing you know who we are so i'm not gonna read it but yeah so um we started this gofundme all of the funds will 100 percent be used just for our travel expenses just flight train hotel that's it uh four of us in the band one of our crew guys, that's it. Um, if anybody wants to donate that, if you happen to win the lottery or... Um, they, I, apparently, Bitcoin's doing really well. So if you want to donate us some Bitcoin, we'll take that too. But also, we're also selling tickets to Tolminator. So if anyone out there wants to go to Tolminator and see us there and a bunch of other amazing bands and wants to help us out... You can message me. You can send me an email on, send me a DM on social media or email linked in there um, in the bio for the channel, and I will get back to you. Maybe this comment. I wish Bruce's voice would have been more central and forward. Had the same issue with the last Maiden album. I didn't really feel that way with the current Bruce album. I did feel like that with the Maiden album. Uh, the last Maiden album I thought was pretty boring, to be honest. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't really feel that for that album, I guess. Uh, one more little shameless thing to plug, and then we will get right to some juicy gossip. Let me jump back over to the tube of the U's. Pause for dramatic effect everybody uh here we go 
shit. What the hell's going on? I'm not used to this. I don't know how this works. <laughs> um, where am I? What's happening? What the? F okay, I don't know what just happened. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is, I started streaming uh, gaming on Twitch the other day. Uh, Why it's metal is on Twitch. I did a game stream the other day. It was pretty fun, and it's something that I'll probably continue to do once or twice a week or so. Um, I guess probably will keep it to Twitch because it does it will mess with the YouTube gods and the algorithm. But if you want to hear me talk shit while playing video games and making lots of jokes, uh, check me out on Twitch over there. I'll figure out a more like steady schedule to do that. But yeah, that'll be fun. Um, okay, a couple of things to talk about. Not much, but so before I got on here, um, some of you might have seen that Tank the Tech released his latest video talking about the Blue Raid, Blue Rage, the Blue Ridge Rock Festival, and um, addressing all those stupid rumors that were going around the other week saying that they're selling tickets, it's coming back, it's gonna happen, blah, 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 blah what's going on? Um, Thankfully, Tech is someone, Tech, <laughs> Tank the Tech is someone who will uh, report honestly and not just jump into the hype of what everyone's promoting. So he actually did look into it, which thank you, because I was so annoyed seeing all of those articles going around because like there was no new information. Those tickets had been on sale for months. And then if you go on to, um, what was it? Now it it's uh, on Blue Ridge's website. Now it still does say click here to buy tickets, but I guess if you go there, it says sold out or not sold out, not available. Um, I don't know how long that not available has been there for, but I'm wondering like if that not available has been there for a while, uh, then all the media outlets just jumped on it for no reason, or if Blue Ridge did change that as soon as all this drama was going around, which is definitely likely, but. Um, Anyway, let me pull up this video. But uh, Tank did a really good job pointing out the some of the background on it, showing why it wasn't just a one-time thing. Uh, Oopsie Daisy Blue Ridge 2023 went a little wrong, but otherwise everything was fine. Uh, he showed why that's not the case, so that was awesome. Um, and he definitely, he jumped into, oh, let me just pull it up here. I want to address this a comment really quick before I get there. It says, I tried searching for Dark Insanity on Metal Archives. There are two, one from Japan and the other from Croatia. Which one is yours? Neither. We're not on uh, Metal Archives yet. Um, I swear when I fucking came up with Dark Insanity and looked for it, didn't see these fucking names. Or I think I saw the Japan one, but it looked like not current. I think um, I did not see this fucking Croatia one, but no, uh, neither of those are us it's on Spotify and streaming platforms. We will have to figure that out because, yeah, definitely uploaded um, the thing to Spotify and a couple of them showed different artists named Dark Insanity. So fun things to figure out going forward. Um. Yeah, and as William just says, Metal Archives is weird. There's like tons of different bands with different names. Anyway, where am I? Pulling up Tanks video Blue Ridge Rock Fest 2024 is not happening. Um, unlike all of the other people who are like, oh my God, is it happening? With no info. Uh, what should I get to first? So he does pull up um, other lawsuits involved with Blue Ridge. And an update of recently, they just closed out a lawsuit that went all the way to court where they have to pay over half a million for it. It was either, was it unpaid wages or like unpaid bills or something? Uh, he 
covered that somewhere. Uh, yeah, Blairs just lost seven hundred, a hundred thousand. You guys should be able to see this. Yeah, okay. Uh, we also learned that Blue Ridge Rock Festival has settled one of its three active lawsuits. <laughs> See, this works. It's, its parent company, Purpose Driven Events, LLC, will now pay North Carolina rental business Sunbelt Rentals $669,092.81 for not fully paying for equipment from the 2002 festival. Tw 2002, 2022, not even addressing 2023 at all. Um, yeah, as Tank states here, they're fucking broke. There ain't no way this festival is going to happen this year. Uh, there's no way your festival bombs that hard in 2023 where everyone needs refunds and then you pay up over half a million dollars in penalties for a previous one. So the good news is that I do agree. I don't think Blue Ridge will be coming back. Bad news is that I don't think anyone will be getting their refunds either. But um, something I did want to address in Tank's video for how good it was, and it is very good. Uh, where is it? Do -do -do. He covers Jonathan's. Uh, uh, why am I being so dumb? Do vocal warm ups, everyone, so you can learn to speak without sounding like a fucking idiot like me. Uh, Tank goes through Jonathan Sly's family history here a little bit. I'll play a couple clips. Um, because he did get something incorrect, and I just wanted to correct it. I thought this said biking when I was watching Tank's video. So it was like two, uh, two charged with biking hundreds and fraud scheme, and I was like, "What the fuck is Tank talking about?" Oh, I've never heard of this word in my entire life. Half of that is true. That is not uh, Jonathan Sly's Faja, but it is his grand Faja. But let's see here really quick. Jonathan. Jonathan Sly going on record doesn't mean jack shit for anything. I know Tank knows that. I'm just stating. Fans have uncovered a couple of articles from 2008 pertaining to a Ponzi scheme. These stories incorrectly picked my dad that was part of that criminal operation. Those articles were made in error and ultimately retraction statements were aired. My dad was not at all involved in this scheme. In the official court document, the John Sly that was responsible and testified was a 68-year-old man. That would mean that the criminal is in his 80s today. My dad is currently in his 50s at present, not his 80s. The that go back to that really quick <clears throat> so yeah he denies his father being involved i don't know well i guess maybe some i guess some people maybe did say that it was his dad but uh personally i in the background research i saw was that it was his grandfather because that 68 rage at the time it does add up, but the reason I said and or grandfather, I'll get to that in a second. The one thing I will say that I've not seen is he said there were retraction statements from that. I have not seen any of those. That's not true. I I looked. I looked when I made my videos. I looked right after watching Tank's video here. I didn't see any retraction statements from anybody. I want to look a little bit closer here and read the full statement. Um Or at least from where he left off. So from where uh, Tank left off reading it, the quote from John Sly. Oh, sorry. I was 14 at the time that this story of mistaken identity played out. 
sorry, when I read a quote from Jonathan Sly, I just throw up a little bit. I vividly recall the voicemails and threats we received as a family until the truth was revealed. Uh, it was an extremely painful time for my father. <laughs> of course, this week it resurfaced due to attention surrounding myself. You cannot imagine the pain I feel as a son for being responsible for my family reliving this. I mean, it's not just you, but yeah. In the future, I ask that all of your anger, frustration, and animosity towards me, not my family, my parents volunteered at Blue Ridge last weekend, don't care, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so anyway, that's all what he says there. Get a little bit more. Ching. Now, uh, this is not a slide on Tank at all. I think Tank's an awesome dude, and he reported this really well. I just want to correctly state that in Jonathan Sly's quote here in this article, he did not say that his family was not involved in this scheme. He specifically says his father was not involved in the scheme. As as it has been advised not to address this particular erroneous rumor, probably because it's not just a rumor, um, but for better or for worse, I cannot idly stand by when it comes to family. Um, it has been brought up to my attention that fans have uncovered a couple of articles in 2008, blah, 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 Ponzi scheme. These stories incorrectly pinned my dad. Uh, those articles were made in error. They were not redacted. Uh, my dad was not involved in the scheme in any way. Now, Let's go to where I got to switch the thing. Uh, let's go to the SEC's actual statement. SEC.gov litigation is legal crap. <laughs> SafeFest LLC, uh, 2008, blah, blah, blah. The information... Um, John V. Sly, age 68, as was mentioned in uh, John's quote, and a resident, a resident of Arlington, Virginia, which is where the Sly family is, which is where John Sly from Blue Ridge is, which is where his father and their church is. So that's a bit of a coincidence. For allegedly running a Ponzi-like scheme and misappropriating investor funds, now... I also found this one article. I don't really need this anymore. I don't think. Where am I? The savior of metal is here to save the day. Oh, the sound is fucking up on the thing. I need to figure out why that is. Every time I try sharing a video, apparently the sound doesn't work. And it makes everything really awkward. I probably just say random things that don't make sense. And then you guys can put in whatever the other person is saying. You make a very strange combination. <laughs> but I wanted to share this. So this is from, says economictimes.indiatimes.com. See how resourceful that is. Anyway, Economic Times, U.S. man accused of investment scam targeting Christians. Uh, federal authorities arrested a man accused of a running an investment scheme netted 25 million targeting christians um do do where is the mention of his good good friend da -da 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 oh here we go Investment materials included the resume of an Arlington, Virginia pastor, Reverend John V. Sly, who was listed as one of the founders of some cancer research and did a bunch of like probably fraudulent charities. <laughs> uh, anyway, Arlington, Virginia pastor, 
John V. Sly, the grandfather involved in the SEC crime. A. John Sly listed as pastor for the Grace Community Church in Arlington, Virginia, which is the church that Jonathan Sly's family owns, said he was the son of the John Sly named in the criminal complaint. He said he was unaware of his father's activities and had no further comment. Because, <laughs> you know, when your dad is stealing $25 million, that tends to be something you just never comes up. There's never any signs. Hey, Dad, where did you get that new Rolls Royce? All of a sudden, church has been going real well this month. <laughs> um, now, I haven't seen that uh, quote in that part everywhere, but it is out there, and all of the other info little bits do, do add up. So I just wanted to clarify that part. But Tank's video is great and covers it well, and... I really appreciate not doing just what every other metal news outlet did. Oh my God, I think Blue Ridge is back. That's silly. Anyway, <laughs> rather than actually looking into anything. <laughs> uh, let me catch up with the comments here really quick. Uh, Lumbergo, say hello to Lumberg for me. Metal Archives is a great resource, but the mods that run the site are douchebags. Uh, there have been bands that were listed there for years until somebody decided they suddenly weren't metal enough. Yeah, I mean, I don't know how it works. Um, do you think Psycho Las Vegas is happening this year? No official announcement yet one way or the other. No, I definitely don't think so. If it was, it would be announced already, um, which sucks because I really enjoyed Psycho. I hope it does come back. But it doesn't look like it. I guess they're having problems finding a good location, even though Mandalay Bay was rad. But unfortunately, I do not think so. I hope it comes back. Uh, been listening to Motorhead nonstop lately. Hell yeah. I swear them and Wasp were the only two bands where their low is even some of their best uh, bands peak. You definitely find some really good bangers when you go into their discography and find some more uh rarities i guess you'd say uh, me and my band want to cover the hammer by motorhead and we want to do that at tolminator so there's a little hint of what our set list might include <laughs> um is there other metal news i had something else i want to bring up but let me see if there's other topics too or if i can even mm, i need to get this article over one second let me find this so my next video that i know everybody's eagerly waiting on it is coming i promise you it is most oh it's almost done being written um metal days for 2024 everyone's favorite festival run by uh, Bob Ain the Prick, Little Bo Prick, the ancient Slovenian folk golem, <laughs> canceled their festival for 2024, stating that uh, due to the floods of last year, because even God hates Bob Ain and flooded out middle days, uh, they're just going to not do this year and focus on giving a great festival next year. And they're going to do that by not giving it anyone who bought tickets for this year any refunds. Which is pretty hilarious. But um, I recently found some tidbit pieces of information that I want to pull up here. Let's see how well they work. Because I'm going to need a robot translator for this shit. Apparently... There has been some information going around. Oh, this actually will work. Oh, cool. Yay. Magic Skynet robot uh, did it for me. Translate this one too. Cool. All right. Here we go. Uh, damn it. Hit the wrong button. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Recently... Um, what am I saying? Metal Days canceled 2024. Said they're only going to do 2025. 
did not say any information on refunds. As everyone out there knows, they've not done most of the refunds from 2020, 2021, cancel partialations for 2023. Now 2024, there's a whole fucking long line of people waiting to get their money back. Um, recently in the town of Tolman, I think I covered this on the last podcast, uh, the city, the town, whatever they go by, passed a new ordinance for festivals where they greatly increase the fee to hold a festival in Tolman from like a couple thousand to over 40,000. It was ridiculous. But so, I mean, I'm saying that I think that price increase is ridiculous. I have to say that it seems like a lot of the festivals that are actually affected by it seem pretty happy with it because it confirmed that they can be there for another four years without any issues. Anyway, let's get to the juicy stuff. Newspapers in Slovenia have been sharing this increase and they dropped some little interesting tidbits of information along in there that I would like to find. Now, to be fair, I did not read these articles yet. I was just told this information was here, but it will be juicy if we find it. They increased fees for everybody. So pretty much all festivals are good. Punk Rock Holiday, Tolmanator are good there for another four years. And after that, they're pretty much all probably going to leave unless the fee changes by a lot. Uh, yeah, festivals with up to 5,000 visitors per day, like Tolmanator, will now have to pay 8,000 euros per day, which for a large f- festival means 40,000 euros. In recent year, this type of fee amounted to 7,500 euros total has now been increased to 40,000 euros total. That's, I don't think that's a good idea. (laughs) Oh yeah. And here's the information right here. Why would they have come up with this information? As I just skimmed right there. Why would the town of Tolman want to impose such a high fee on festivals? Could it be that a former festival in that area We're such dickheads that they want to put in all regulations possible. Let's find out. They decided on this measure because some fees from past festivals are still not settled. The festival fee for Metal Days 2022 was partially paid to the municipal budget only for last year. And an administrative dispute is ongoing for the remaining unpaid part in the amount of 20000 Metal Days owes Tolman at least 20,000 euros. I think they take euros there. 20,000 euros for the 2022 festival. That's on top of a bunch of workers not having been paid. That's on top of pretty much... I won't say no refunds. Some people have gotten refunds. Mostly no refunds. Years of people demanding refunds. Metal Days said when they had to leave and they got their new location, which will be my new video, we didn't choose to leave Tolman. They changed their rules to not allow these types of festivals anymore. So we had to leave. It wasn't on us. They failed to mention that they were in 20,000 euros in debt and had to fucking leave. (laughs) Let's keep going. Is there any more on Metal Days? Uh, If not, I can jump to the other article. Oh, sorry. I wasn't done yet. Even the assessed fee for the Overjam Reggae Festival 2023, which is a festival also run by Bobbing, in the amount of 7,500 euros has not yet been settled despite numerous reminders. Yep, that was another festival that Bob Bain was doing. It sounds like Metal Days is in a bunch of debt. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I don't think any of this really applies. I'm just looking for the term Metal Days to pop up. <laughs> uh, let's try the other article. Hang on. Sorry, I'm just seeing what's going on with everybody. 
clear rules and a higher festival fee for festivals in Tolman. All because of Bob Ain. This probably wouldn't have happened at all if it wasn't for him. Stupid asshole. Um, blah, 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 blah. Looking for the terror metal days. Excuse me for a second. I mean, you really can't even be, ma be mad. If you had to deal with this fucker for years, you probably would be like, oh, you want to do a festival here? You're going to have to pay a lot to show that you're not a psychopath. Oh, here we go. Wait. Due to previous bad experiences with some organizers, a prepaid festival fee will be a condition for obtaining permission to hold the festival. I don't blame them. Credits to Metal Days and Overjam Reggae Festival. Thank you, Metal Days. Be, by, be kind like Bob Ain. Namely, the Metal Days Festival which moved to Valing last year and canceled the festival there this year, still owes Tolman 20,000 euros for 2022, and it is clear from the comments of visitors that many of them owe the refund of paid tickets. Thank you. Also, 7,500 for the reggae. Not the same thing, same thing, same thing. Uh, Andrew, who's that? Hang on. I need to Andrew Tezig for or Andrew. I don't, you know what I mean? Oh, organizer of punk rock holiday. Okay. Do you hear that? Gosh, for the last two years, I've been negotiating. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is... Uh... Wait, I'm confused. Hang on. Okay, so... Also, the 7500 for the Overjam Reggae Festival. Um... This dude, who I thought was the organizer for Punk Rock Holiday. Oh! Oh! I think this is the person like, in charge of hosting festivals here. He's talking about the Punk Rock Holiday people. I apologize for all of my viewers for how dumb I am. <laughs> you can watch in real time a metalhead trying to read. <laughs> anyway, for the last two years, we have been operating at a significant loss. Uh, for two years, we have been negotiating with our Spurian colleagues who want to create festivals here. And so the company Overjam, uh, DOO, so to. Oh, wrong see one of my bills. It was promised that they would pay, and I hope it will happen soon. So, listed as the owner and director. It seems like they sold that festival for a lot. I, I will need to do more digging, and this will be more in a video. Uh, figured out well, brain, words, speaking, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, confirm for everybody that Metal Days owes this city of Tolman 20,000 euros um, on top of owing all of their fans refunds still on top of uh, what else? Canceling this year and making excuses. Yeah, Metal Days sucks. Don't ever play there. <laughs> don't ever play. Don't ever attend Blue Ridge. Or Metal Days. There are good festivals out there where you deal with the normal problems of festivals that just like some crappy lines and shit. Um, 
But yeah. I read this comment from Elliot Chapman says your band only has two songs available at the moment. Could be getting more in the near future. I uh, love the songs, by the way. Thank you. Yeah, we'll be having two more songs coming up real, real soon. Probably um, maybe within the next week or two. We're just waiting for our artwork for the EP and then that will release, be released as a whole. So we have two more songs coming in the extremely near future. But uh, thanks for checking them out. I'm glad you liked it. Uh, Franco asks, is Awoken a good first metal festival? What is, uh, what is Awoken? Oh, do you mean Vakken? I think if you mean, uh, the Vakken festival, it's, uh, it's extreme. It definitely is jumping right into the, I would say fire. It's more muddy than it is fire, but right into the extreme of the action too. You definitely will leave with hair on your chest and scars if you do Vakken for your first festival but but it will be awesome <laughs> i like how you went from sly guy straight to little bow prick exactly got a bunch of them up together on my merch store uh they have little toys like stuffed animals like there's a little bear a little rabbit and you can put them saving like the white's metal t-shirt or whatever and i want to make one saying like little bow prick and sly guy and advertise them as like chew toys for your dog or like voodoo dolls. If you have a bad day, you can take your little bow prick bear and just set them on fire and then you'll feel better. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that would be lovely. Uh, thoughts about Summer Slaughter Tour coming back. I never went to any of the years of the Summer Slaughter Tour. It was like, I mean, it's cool. I'm glad there's a festival, a touring festival out there with decent underground bands. None of the lineups just ever really appealed to me that much, but um, I'm happy to see it back if it does come back for sure. Um, uh, so I, I'm going to butcher this. It's Kristov. Kristov. My bad, but Christoph artwork. He did my logos. He did the Wyatt's metal. Um, he did save your metal. If you need an awesome logo, hit him up. He's very, very good at it. Um, highly recommend it. What's going on? We were making fun of Blue Ridge a little bit. Um, we were making fun of Metal Days a lot. Metal Days owes a lot of money while they're trying to not refund people while they're trying to move to not trying they do move in they do live in zanzibar now the story has progress the update will be fun <laughs> um but that's pretty much that what except or i wanted to catch up. william buckley of anubis you should check them out as much as i love psycho it also happens the same weekend as mad with power so now it's at least an easy call to fly my dragon riding has to Madison. Uh, I heard a lot of good things about Mad of Power. That's when I definitely need to hit up. There's a bunch of, I think you were saying there's a bunch of smaller, uh, more kind of power metal, speed metal based festivals popping up now. I know, I believe it's a Hell's Heroes is coming up and lots of people are stoked on that one. Let me pull that lineup up. Hell's if that's what it's called. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, uh, can't you just show me the damn poster? Okay. And jump to sharing the screen. Hell's Heroes taking place in Texas, I believe. Might help if we actually looked at it. Sodom, I just saw in 70k, and we're fucking intense as shit. Uh, Queen's Right, Candle Mass, uh, Solitude, Rotting Christ, Autopsy, bunch of bands. Yeah, Houston, Texas. This is one that I want to check out. Um, obviously, it won't be happening since it starts tomorrow, and I'm here, but someday. For sure. <laughs> Someone asked me to pull up the Milwaukee Metal Fest lineup, and which keeps getting better pretty much by the day or by the week. I'm definitely going to Milwaukee Metal Fest. Um, yeah, the lineup. Okay. 
the lineup, which is the headliners. We got Blind Guardian, Mr. Bungle, Slaughter to Prevail. That is quite different bands. <laughs> Nothing about those will sound similar at all. But I like all of those bands. Uh, yeah, very power metally on the first day. I love Doro. I have huge respect for Doro. I was stoked when she got announced. It's kind of funny here to go like, brutal, 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 Doro. And then, <laughs> brutal. We've got Incantation. We've got Mardu. We've got Autopsy. And then we've got the Queen of Metal. <laughs> Which is cool with me. I like all of them. Yeah, I do think the Milwaukee lineup is solid as fuck. I was a bit surprised, as I've mentioned before. I thought they would have a little bit bigger bands for headliners just because last year they had uh, Anthrax and Lamb of God. I don't feel like Blind God or Mr. Bungle are on that level. But that's not me complaining because I do really like this lineup. That's me just more kind of like, oh, okay. Uh... Who is my favorite female vocalist then? Oh, God. Fuck. I do. I really love Floor a lot because she has so much different range. I feel like she's very professional and can handle uh, all these different styles really well. I will admit um, one that greatly, greatly influenced me uh in terms of vocal techniques, sound wise, but also like stage performance, uh, is Angela Gasso from Arch Enemy. I remember first discovering her and being like, holy fucking shit. One, blown away that it was a woman because that was the first time that I ever saw a woman doing extreme vocals. But then just grew to being like, she, like she's really fucking good. Um, and I felt like she always had this presence on stage where it felt like she'd dive off and just start like pummeling you in the face. Uh, so yeah, Angela Gasso, I think is probably my biggest, um, influence in terms of female vocalists, but I do like a whole bunch of them out there. I definitely think Arch Enemy were a lot better when she was in the band. Um, what do you think about the decibel metal and beer lineup? Let's pull that one up. I know I've seen it before, but I definitely forgot. Decibel beer oh this one looks pretty snazzy decibel metal and beer first on the lineup we have beer uh we've got biohazard uh deicide doing a couple old sets dying fetus crowbar i don't know what these say <laughs> Internal bleeding, 200 stab wounds. Uh, Will Haven. I don't know what that is, but it just looks weird compared to all of these like brutal murder. Gah! Will Haven. <laughs> I have no idea who that is. Maybe his music is brutal. <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, I don't know a whole bunch of these bands. I do like D side up here is big and awesome. Obviously, if you're a drinker, it's a very appealing festival to go to. I went to one. That I think it was in Santa Ana and it was headlined by Possessed and someone else. But it was pretty nuts to just be at a metal show with not free alcohol, but you know, you could just kept refilling and going over and over. Little fast, can I nap when Doro plays? You definitely can. <laughs> be a good time to rest up to get back into the rest of the brutality. Oh, yeah. Uh, Overkill was recently added to Milwaukee Metal Fest. Um, yeah, I thought they were done, but they keep like every few days just being like, hey, we just we added this new band because fuck it. <laughs> Sweet. I'll take it. Bethlehem has the best female vocalist. I've heard a little bit of their stuff, not too much, but definitely dig the extreme harshness of what I've heard. That's very appealing to me. Um, there's Oh, there's a festival coming up in the swamp, stanky, disgusting, uh, fentanyl-infused shithole that is the California Bay Area. 
called California Death Fest. Let me find the lineup because that one keeps announcing really good shit too. Uh, yeah, but don't share there. Try not to dox people while I'm on here. <laughs> okay, share screen. Happening in Oakland in October, the Oakland Metro. We've got California Death Fest put on, I believe it's put on by the Maryland Death Fest people. Dismember, Sodom, Monstrosity, Sacrifice, Hyrax. Already a pretty fucking sick lineup. I would already like to see that. Um, I'm sure we'll get even cooler. The only problem for me is that it's in Oakland. And I lived in Oakland for years. And I fucking hate Oakland. <laughs> and don't want to go back there for any reason. But that lineup is good. So, I mean, hey. <laughs> Find somewhere to secure your valuables if you go to California Death Fest. Um, hey, Putrid Eternity, my guitarist from Dark Insanity. What's up, man? Jumping in here saying I'm going to California Death Fest. I'm going to Aftershock, which I think is either the same days or the days right before California Death Fest. So maybe we'll have to kick it out in my home area. And we could be playing shows and doing shit like that. As a European, I'm interested, what are the most popular European metal bands in the U.S.? I uh, remember you talking about Blind Guardian. Is there a following for other bands of that power metal wave like Halloween? I would say that classic power metal wave is much smaller here. You do find those fans, but they're much, much less. In terms of what Americans, what like European bands Americans like, Ginger is really big here now uh they've been playing arenas and bigger and bigger tours they toured with the disturbed um amana martha is quickly building up there for sure uh they've i ne back in the day I used to see them at clubs never thought i would see them on stage with an actual viking ship and everything um amana martha and gojira i would say behemoth a bit um i know i'm forgetting some that often pop up they're not like big, big, but alien weaponry pops up on a lot of festivals here. Um, oh yeah, Alex says Sabaton is big in the U.S. That is true. Sabaton are now big in the U.S. I remember their first U.S. tour, and they they grew up so fast. I'm proud of those guys. <laughs> um, there is a good underground wave of metalheads here who love the north american canadian like speed metal scene like unleash the archers um bunch of those other bands that i'm totally blanking on at the moment that i'm sure william will probably just name every single one of them here in a moment it says power metals definitely got smaller following here as a whole but the community is pretty tight-knit i see a lot of people at the same fest across the country yeah that's definitely true it's a much smaller power metal community people here like all their bro heavy stuff <laughs> if you look up a f any of the festivals like aftershock welcome to rockville any of the danny wimmer festivals that will pretty much show you if there's any european bands on those which european bands are popular in the u.s i know power wolf is very popular here in the uk how are they in the u.s they just did their first u.s tour i think it was last year um I think they only did like New York, LA and like the places where they know they're going to do big. And they did. They sold out in LA uh, at the Wiltern, which is a big place. They just announced another tour with Unleashed the Archers. I forgot about that. I bought tickets to that. Um, so they're new. They're very new to the US, like in the last year just came over. But it seems they will be building pretty quickly. Um, Ghost, I don't know if you want to count them as a metal band, but... Uh, Ghost is weirdly huge in America. That doesn't make any sense to me, but they are. <laughs> um, but there's a couple. It's kind of rare. Usually when bands, when European bands start um, getting big notoriety in the U.S., like playing big festivals, 
they tend to have been around for a long time at that point and already considered like legends in uh in europe oh yeah rammstein is huge fucking everywhere they that's like the biggest fucking concert um that i've seen as a solo band anywhere that shit was amazing yeah everybody does love rammstein because they had a lot of really uh mainstream play for a while yep this comment is accurate people in the u.s love the mainstream radio bro or old head metal true they love either like they love like the old school metallica slayer pantera and then they'll go to like five finger death punch lamb of god um corn <laughs> oh but what are like newer ones uh that americans like deathcore is really big in terms of like uh not mainstream mainstream if you're looking at more crushing more underground stuff it's a lot of deathcore uh metalcore stuff uh lorna shore everyone fucking nuts over them uh slaughter to prevail is blowing up real big right now um yeah that's the type of thing that americans are more interested in Coming on Sodom, um, there's the old school metalheads definitely respect the shit out of Sodom in America. If they're playing like Maryland Death Fest or something, uh, yeah, they're going to have like a crazy ass crowd, especially especially because they don't come here often. But they're not going to be playing that big of a place uh, like the Oakland Metro is a club, uh, like a pretty underground club. It's they're not going to be playing any like theaters or um I don't think they've even done like an actual tour in the US for a while. But it's interesting how a lot of bands kind of go down a peg when they come overseas. I remember back when like Nightwish was first coming to the US and they would play in dinky little bars uh, that fit a couple hundred people where there was not really a backstage and the band's just there. And at the same time, they're playing in Finland at like Iron Maiden sized shows with fucking massive stadiums. Uh, interesting dynamic. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, Hatebreed just announced a tour with Carcass, Harmsway, and Crypta. I'll pull that up for people who don't know about it. There are two good bands on that bill. There are three good bands on that bill. Um, I literally just forgot what I said. Okay. Hatebreed tour. Images. Let's go to the ad whores known as Blabbermouth. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Trying to, okay, there we go. Do, do. Yes, if you get the chance to just go to this show and see Carcass and Crypto, I'd fucking highly recommend it. Crypto, Harm's Way, Carcass, Hate Breed, all of these places coming pretty much everywhere to a mosh pit near you. I think it's a pretty good tour, especially for crypto. That's going to get them pretty good notoriety because that is kind of a mix of bands that has a good following in the U.S. That a lot of U.S. people who would consider themselves underground metal, or like hardcore metal heads, would probably be interested in a lineup like this. So I think that's pretty good for them. uh yeah so check out the store <laughs> sorry don't know what the hell i'm saying anymore um i am gonna wrap up here just because i have things to do i have to finish my metal days video which is a lot more juicy information in it but i'm glad i got to share with everybody that metal days owes twenty thousand euros to the city of tolman because metal day sucks and bob ain is a douchebag um big uh, exciting news everybody tonight in five hours so in my time five o'clock california time i will be on i will be a guest on uh diabolical souls channel we'll be doing an interview hanging out talking about metal youtube it'll be a good time so check out me out oh yeah 
check me out over on Diabolical Souls over on YouTube later today, five o'clock my time. Um, check out all of my shit, all of my songs. Play them so many times that you're sick of them. Find someone that you really hate, your worst enemy in life. Steal their credit card information and use it to buy all of my merch. And with that said, thanks for tuning in and hanging out, everybody. It's fun as always. I will catch you all next week.